Yeah. Not very much. First of all, thank you. Um, I have to say, one of my first freak out moments around this is when I saw the first email come out with the speakers, and I read them and I thought, oh shit, I'm the boring one. Oh. <laughs> um, so, Melody, I have to say thank you for what is a truly terrifying opportunity to stand up here in front of a hundred newest, dearest, best friends who I've never met before and get vulnerable, which um, does not usually come with the CEO territory. So, thank you. I'm honored when I'm not being horrified. Thank you. Um, so, in my first conversation with Melody, she said, I just want you to talk about what freaks you out. And my brain immediately went to work. And I, I am. I'm the CEO of this relatively big organization that has the responsibility of helping girls develop into the next you. And reality is, that's a pretty weighty responsibility. I think about it every morning when I get up. I think about it all throughout the day. I get the heft of what it is that we do. You would think that I would freak out about work on a routine basis. Reality is I don't. <laughs> the work world, what I get to do is so fun. And I have the most amazing folks that I work with, volunteers, staff, girls. But if you think about it, where else in life do you really know how it is that you're doing, right? I mean, if nothing else, you have an annual performance appraisal with your boss. Your boss sits you down, my board chair says, this is not great, let's work on these things. Okay, I can do that. You don't get that with your husband, what's working well, or God forbid, with your kids, right? So. At work, you have all of these metrics. You have, I have, I have membership numbers. I have outcome data. I have, how's the cookie cell doing? I have, how camp do? I have all of these numbers and data that I can point to that tells me it's going well or not. And on any given day, I'm pretty darn comfortable. I go to work. I know the importance of what I'm doing, but I know what I'm doing, and I know how to do it. So that was my first thought talking with Melody is, you know what, I really don't freak out about them. What I freak out about is my kids, which is ironic. I have done all of this youth development stuff, the gang involved kids and the little abused kids and now Girl Scouts and you know, that should be the last thing in the world that I freak out about. But reality is, that's where my freak out moments come. Because think about it, you don't get any kind of performance evaluation with your kids. Hopefully when you're 80, you can look back and if the little darlings aren't in prison, <laughs> you're not good, right? But until then, the closest you get is when you take the little darlings to their annual checkup with the pediatrician when they're little and the doctor says, 90th percentile of growth and you think, I'm rocking, or they're hitting their developmental milestones or whatever. So that's really as close as you get in terms of metrics with the kids. You don't get that, is it working, is it not working, how am I screwing them up, how am I not screwing them up? And the one thing that I have been really, really, really sure of since my son was born, not quite 14 years ago, making me a mother, is both of my children, at the 14-year-old boy and the 11 going on 17-year-old girl, <laughs> they will both be in therapy at some point in their life and it will be my fault. <laughs> I know that. I can be okay with it in this part of my brain. I'm not okay with it in the other part of my brain. I don't want it to be my fault. I want it to be their dad's fault. <laughs> I don't want it to be my fault. And the reality is, it probably is mine. I don't mean physically breaking my kids when I say my, but what if I break my kids moment? Although there are moments around that. <laughs> we, we, you said vulnerable, right? We, um, we moved up here a year ago for me to take this position. Complete freak out month, months, it's not just a moment. They're doing great. What if I move them and I break them? Yeah, like, what if breaking them, what if moving them breaks them? They're, they're doing well. Had been here for about a month. And my daughter was in gymnastics at the time, and one morning she got up, and she's literally hopping around the house getting ready for school. And I said, huh, Benji, what's up with that? She said, my leg really hurts, but it's fine. I can just hop around school. <laughs> Somebody will notice that you're 
hopping around <coughs> school, so let's go get it checked out. Turns out she has a stress fracture in her leg. That's, you know, I can, I can rationalize that. No big deal. Fast forward to that evening, my son comes home from football practice. And if any of you have one of these beasts, when they come home from football practice, they have these little pinpoint fingerprint bruises all up and down their arms that make it look like something not awful is being done to them by someone. And he was so proud that day because he had this huge bruise on his elbow, too, that was already starting to swell. <laughs> My son and I tend to rough house, and he's really ticklish, which I just love. And so I'm chasing him down the hall into his bedroom. We're messing around that evening. Gets into the room, slams the door. I hit the door right as he starts to open the door. The door slams open with my entire body weight right into his hurt elbow. He drops like a ton of bricks. <laughs> Thinking that's not good, especially with yoga wood. Next morning, it's bad. I say, we're going to have to go get that checked out. Keep in mind, child abuse background professionally. <laughs> So my son's eyes get really big, and he says, well, what do I tell the doctor? I said, what do you mean, what do you tell the doctor? You tell the doctor the truth. He says, my mom slammed my hurt elbow in the door. <laughs> <laughs> Not that truth. <laughs> He's like, oh, good. Now we're coaching the kids on how to talk to the doctor. <laughs> Walk in. Of course, it's the same doctor who saw my daughter the day before. I <laughs> got disappear into her hairline. All I can say is, I swear these are the only two I have. If my husband comes in tomorrow with some sort of an injury, we got a problem. And then the headline, well, yet no Girl Scout CEO arrested on charge of that. <laughs> I don't usually worry about the physical part. I worry about the emotional breaking. And for me right now, it is largely centered around that 11 going on 17 year old daughter. Because while she's 11, she looks like she's 17. She has legs that have suddenly become a mile long. I made the mistake of letting her buy boots that have a little two-inch heel. I put them on. I look dumpy. She puts them on. She struts out to the bus stop. She looks like she's on a runway in Milan. And I'm like, holy crap, where did all of that come from? It does not help that on top of those mile-long legs, you said boots, there is this there boots. Oh my God. <laughs> morning now she walks out having been dressed for school and I'm looking at her t-shirt and all I can see is the boot. Oh my God, put on the and then I start freaking out over oh my god what am I doing to her body image and she's beautiful and there's nothing inappropriate about how she looks except she's on loving and she's got all this and what if I'm giving I'm planting the seeds of an eating disorder and oh my god so that is where my freak out moments are happening right now. It's all culminated in the last couple of weeks because she's made the transition to middle school. I know it was going way too well. I've been saying I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop because it's going way too well. Two weeks ago, we got the passwords to go in and check on the parent website. How are the grades doing? She's doing really well in most things, except for the class that has the big fat F. <coughs> And the big fat F is not because she can't do the work if she's not understanding it. It's that she's not getting assignments turned in. It's all organization and time management. So we've been doing a lot of that mom sitting down and helping work through things, which means I'm getting a lot of, I hate you. You're ruining my life. I wish I had never been born or adopted, which she is. All, all of that kind of stuff. So it's all coming. And the only thing that I keep thinking, you know that commercial? that has the washer and the dryer at the end of the really pretty hallway in the really pretty laundry room that none of us have. <laughs> the voiceover is the, the girls, the teenage girl saying, where are my jeans? And the mom saying, oh, they're in the washer. And the girl goes straight to, you're ruining my life. And I keep thinking, OK, it's not just me. It's universal. <laughs> and maybe I'm not breaking her. Maybe I'm not breaking her too badly. Although I know I am breaking her in some little part, and that's the part that I'm freaking out over. I'm the CEO of a big organization that does development for girls. I freak out over what I'm doing to the development of my girl. And I'm thrilled to be able to share it with you.